So the F-test is really designed as a component for troubleshooting and diagnosing wiring connections within your show. It's, it's small, it's handheld, it can be battery powered, it can also draw its power from the pixels. And the idea is you plug it into your pixels or to your controller or to your smart receiver and diagnose why those things may or may not be receiving the data that they should be receiving. I know in my show last year, there were a couple of situations where, you know, I had issues with smart receivers, you know, going offline or pixels starting to behave incorrectly on a smart receiver. And, you know, I was unclear, is this a problem with the data getting to the smart receiver? Is it a problem with the pixels themselves, etc.? And there's no easy way to troubleshoot that other than running around and replacing components. And we wanted to come up with a way that did make that easier. So, so let's talk through uh, what this thing can do. Now, what I was going to do is show you what it looks like. There it is. It's handheld. It fits easily in your hand. There's a little USB connection for power, uh, but it fits nicely in your hand or in your pocket when you're out troubleshooting your show. So when you are troubleshooting a show, it, it's, it's actually quite difficult to determine what's wrong when it's not working. There's lots of potential breakpoints. There's lots of points at which the data can go wrong. And for some of them, there is ways to troubleshoot it. But for many areas of the show, it's actually really hard. You often have multiple technologies, not just in terms of you know, you've got a show player and a controller and the pixels themselves and maybe some remotes, but you may have multiple different brands of controllers. The problems that you experience often span some distance. Your receiver is, you know, tens of yards out in your yard from your controller and the problem could be at either end and, and being able to isolate that office often results in you running backwards and forwards between the controller. The usual techniques for troubleshooting often requires suitable spare parts and, and often when you don't have those spare parts it can be quite difficult to complete the troubleshooting. It may require you to you know, pull the, the receiver out and drag it back to the controllers because you've only got a short cable to, to test as an alternative and so that's quite awkward and often requires a lot of rework etc. So we want to come up with a way to isolate these problems and, and see the unseeable, the things that today are very hard to diagnose. We wanted to make that a lot easier. Today, when you're doing troubleshooting, there are ways that you can do it. And many of you will have particularly these, these little test units. I've got, I've got several of these, a little power supply. And you know, when I'm building my props, I'll often plug these things in and just check to see that all the pixels are working and running a test pattern, and that's useful. These, the middle ones here, these have been quite popular for a while where people build a little volt ammeter into a box, a single pixel to show the pixel data, and then they would plug them in. And they can be useful to see if the data is there, but obviously it gives you very limited information about what's going on and doesn't help when you've got a smart receiver. Obviously, the X lights and controller and FPP test modes are often used to try and isolate problems and, and lots of spare cables and spare receivers and, and you know, extra pixel strings and the like are also used for troubleshooting. But it's, a, but it's a very hit and miss affair. And we wanted to make that a lot, lot simpler. So what does it do? Essentially, it, it has two real key modes. It's, it's got a receive and monitor and display mode, and it's got a send mode, which sends or manufactures data and sends it out to test a downstream device. In the receive and monitor mode, typically you'll be plugging this into a controller or maybe in between two props. And its basic job is to monitor the data stream and show you what data is being received at that point and help you understand the quality of that signal so that you can see whether things are working as you expect. It works with three sets of protocols. It works with a number of the serial protocols. So obviously DMX, the Renard protocols, although you will need an adapter. And it will also work with basic Lidarama protocols. I can't promise it will work yet with all of the, the pixel protocols for Lightarama. That's something that I actually need to lay my hands on, uh, a copy of Lightarama driving those pixels to see if I can get that to work fully. From a 
receiver perspective, it'll work with all the Falcon receivers, all the FPP receivers, uh, and we also got it to work with the Hinx PIX receivers. Although again, you will need an adapter, which you can make just to, to switch some of the wires around because the Hinx PIX has an unusual wiring format for the receivers. And there's also some other limitations with the Hinx PIX just because of the way the protocol with Hinx PIX works. It's actually quite easy to drive the Hinx PIX remotes, but it can be a little difficult to detect the protocol from the controller because you actually have to reset the controller for it to configure the, the receivers. It also works with uh, WS2811 and all its compatible pixel protocol types. At the moment, we haven't added support for all the other pixel types. They're pretty uncommon in the hobby. Uh, we definitely have the hardware and the ability to upgrade the firmware to do that. So if there's enough demand out there for other protocols, we will definitely consider adding those other protocols in. In terms of output, it will drive output as well to the same thing. So it'll output DMX and Renard again with that crossover cable. It will also output to Lightarama. Essentially it outputs the, the basic protocol that uh, X lights outlooks to Lightarama, so it will do all of the all of the old AC type controllers. It will definitely test those. Again, the pixel controllers. It will probably drive the pixel controllers, but it's driving them as a serial device, so it will drive only a very limited number of channels. All the receivers, it will definitely drive the Falcon, the FPP, and the Hinx PIX. The Hinx PIX is just as functional as the others, except of course it requires that crossover cable, and it will of course drive all your WS2811 and compatible pixels. It has a bit of reference information built in, I'll show you that. And it will, like I said, draw power either from a pixel input or from a USB battery pack. But when you're using the USB battery pack, you can really, I mean, you can use it to monitor your 2811 pixels data, and you can uh, receive and send your DMX and your smart receiver data. You, so you don't need to run pixel power out to control the unit in order to test your, your smart receivers and the like. You can use a USB battery and a suitable little cable uh, to run it. So, so let's talk through it in a little bit more detail before I actually do a demo of the device. So on the receive and display, the way we've done receive and display, it's very much a pass-through device. So when you place it into your, your pixel data line, you can plug the input side into the, your controller side, the output side into your prop, and it will continue to run your prop just like it was before. It will just monitor the data between the two, and it does act like an F-amp. So if you want to see whether an F-amp would have made a difference at that point to your data reception, plugging this device in, you'll, you'll, it will boost the signal just as an F-amp does. It will show on the screen the pixel and the DMX data that is being received at that point. So it's effectively displays virtual pixels for a, a number of pixels. So you'll be able to see those on the screen. That works across all modes, DMX pixels, smart remotes, etc. You can see not just you can not just see the pixel data as numbers, it actually shows you some little virtual pixels and it shows the color of those pixels, assuming that they're RGB pixels. It will also tell you the number of pixels of data that is being received. It'll tell you things like the frame rate. Uh, and if you insert a, an SD card into the device, you can also log data about the data that is being received. Now, if you log the actual entire pixel data frame, that can get a bit intense. So uh, you may run into some performance issues at the higher end if you're running really large pixel counts. But for smaller amounts of pixels, it will absolutely log that into a text file on the SD card, which you can then pick up later and look at to see what's actually going on. On the DMX Renard Lightarama line, it has a few extra features. Uh, so you can actually drill in and see the actual values of all 512 uh, channels there. Uh, so if you're doing, because DMX often the exact value is more important than you know some representation of how bright the channel is we do display the actual channel values. So if you're troubleshooting the data that's arriving at a moving head and you need the color wheel value to be in a particular color range, et cetera, or a particular range in order to, to set the color, 
you can actually see the actual value that's arising the device. So if you accidentally had set a brightness or something somewhere in the flow and the number had been mangled by the time it got to the device, you'll be actually able to see what that value is and, and therefore troubleshoot back why, it, why that value happened. It will do auto detection of these protocols. So there's a way to ask the device to, to scan the protocols and try to guess what protocol it's actually receiving. And you also have the ability to control whether or not it's using the DMX or LAW wiring, slightly different wiring there. And so that's software controllable on the input and on the output side, it actually outputs the both simultaneously. So no need for jumpers and things like that, like you have on, on a number of the controllers. On the smart receiver side, probably the only special feature that's unique there is you, you do have auto detect on the smart receiver protocols. That works for most of the protocols other than Hinxpix. It can't auto detect the Hinxpix protocol because the only thing that makes that distinct is that that brief period of time after a controller reboot. So uh, there's no ongoing thing that you can monitor and detect there. On the 2811 side, it does monitor voltage and current draw. You can both get an instantaneous and a trend, and you can actually log that current draw and that voltage as well to a file. So if you want to see, you know, how that varies across the course of a song or your show, etc. If you're seeing particular problems at a particular point in your show, you can set it up in logging mode, log those voltages. Maybe you get a voltage dip at that point for some reason. So you can you can log all of that data. You can also visualize the data waveform. Now the data waveform runs at 800 kilohertz and uh, this thing can only sample at 500 kilohertz so it's not a perfect display of the data signal it, to get a perfect display i'd need something that ran at least 1600 kilohertz but it does give you a representation of the signal and most importantly it does sample the voltage of the data signal so if you've got an issue where the ground rise and i've made a video on this for those that have seen it where i talk about why your pixels flicker and often it's due to a grounding issue where the ground is rising up and the and the data signal voltage drops to a point where the the 2811 chips will no longer detect the signal this will actually show you if you've got that sort of issue and so you can detect that really easily. It's also got a bunch of protection. It's got reverse polarity to protection and you can actually test pixels that are in the five to 24 volt range. So there's a, there's a fairly broad range of voltages that you can drive pixels and use this tester in to test. So that's the input side. On the output side, it will write out multiple test patterns. It also has an effects mode that writes out it does some of the the effects made popular through WS two eight uh, through sorry through WLED. I, I didn't implement the entire WLED library. Instead, I used the underlying library that they used when they started. So it, it's a li more limited range of effects, but still it gives you a bunch of effects that you can drive. Uh, you can control the brightness. It does isolate the inputs and the outputs. So you can plug it into a controller that's outputting data and it will ignore the incoming data and drive the output data. So you can do that without having to go and turn your controller off or, or do something funky in order to make sure that uh, uh, the output and the input don't interfere. It deals with that all internally. In the DMX or the serial mode, you can actually control nine channels with very specific values. So if you're uh, playing with a moving head and you, you just want to send particular data values to particular channels, uh, you can just set the F test up using the battery, plug it into your device, go to the channels and set particular values on those channels and check that your, your moving head is doing what you expect it to be doing. So you can do all of that quite manually. And it will output, like I said, the LAW and the DMX wiring um, patterns without any, you don't have to do anything. You don't even have to tell it. It will just output those to both those. If you're using Renard, you will have to use the adapter. On the smart receiver side, you can set it to send data to all smart receivers. So you know, up to six V4, Falcon V4 receivers or up to 16 Hinxpix receivers. It does send a limited number of channels to each receiver. So it's, it's not going to, you know, you can't have, you can't, for instance, have a smart receiver B with 500 pixels and it will output 500 pixels of data. It doesn't work that way. Uh, it will typically output, I think, 100 pixels for, for the, the Falcon receivers. For the older V3s, I think it does a few more. And for the Hinx picks, it's even more limited. I think it does 30 or 40 pixels. 
before it caps out. And that's just because it's trying to send data to as if all of the receivers were plugged in and there's only so many that it can do. The 2811, when it's in output mode, it still monitors voltage and current draw. It will count the number of pixels. So you can plug it into a prop and count the number of pixels attached to the output. And you can also control the number of pixels that it lights up. So you, know, you can go into it, set it to output, and then set the number of pixels you want to output. And you can see you know, that the number of pixels will light up with the test pattern limited to that. So that's the core functionality. There are a couple other things. There is a reference mode with a bunch of images, which you know give you a pocket reference to how to create some of the, the crossover cables that we've been talking about. It'll also give you, you know, the X connect pins. It'll tell you which one's positive and negative and the like if you're unsure. It, it has the ability to save defaults. So, you know, many of you will have standardized on certain types of controllers, certain types of remotes. Uh, you'll only use DMX or you'll only use Lightarama. So you can go in and set all of those up and then save those settings. And then from then on, the device will always default to those settings when you, you power it up. Saves you having to go in and, and reset it up every time that you power it on. Uh, we've talked about the pixel power and it is field upgradable. So with the SD card, we're able to update the firmware. So, you know, if we find bugs or if we decide to add new protocols or new capabilities, there, I mean, there are new capabilities I've added since I gave a preview of this to some people last week. So, you know, we can upgrade it all the time and distribute those files just like we do with our control. There are a couple of questions coming up in chat. Yeah. So like uh, Chris Johnson asked, are the AlphaPix controllers usable with the tester? Uh, absolutely. It's, there's nothing special about an AlphaPix. It's just outputting WS2811 data. So yes, you can receive the data from the controller and obviously you can drive the props themselves as well. Uh, and also the DMX outputs on those controllers. You can also monitor those. And I'll comment that it'll uh, also drive like to the receivers for AlphaPix, but they are not smart receivers. They're just a normal standard receiver. Yeah, so um, the dumb receivers, yes, just, it will work with all the dumb receivers. I know there's a whole bunch of people that make dumb receivers, including Advertech and the like. Yes, it will receive dumb receiver data and display it. Another question was the log file, CSV or text? Uh, it's a CSV file. I, I designed it because you want to load it up into Excel, right, and play with the data. How many pixels will it output in test mode by default? 50 um, or 100 like the controllers, question mark? No, so for pixel output, it will actually output 1,400 pixels by default uh, at, I think, 30% brightness. And I will say that the pixel counting only works if uh, you don't have power injection that doesn't pass through the device. Once you start to do power injection, the, the way in which it counts pixels won't work. Uh, it, it won't crash the device or anything it just won't give reliable answers. so here it is look it's uh i have to it's very black and dark I, I apologize for that but in order to make the screen appear well on the camera that's the best way to do it so so this is it it's got a menu here the the buttons here there's actually physical buttons under underneath these screen buttons which i i, I will be pressing just to show it's live <laughs> and so you can go up and down and it's got nice positive input I don't know if you can hear the buttons pressing, but when I press the buttons, they're really clear and defined. So you can go in and uh, go into pixel input. If I turn on my controller, which is now without putting 50 pixels of color wash, you can see that it's showing up on the screen with the 50 pixels. Uh, you can see the voltage that it's drawing, the current, the pixels are actually attached. Um, actually, there's 100 pixels attached, but the controller is clearly only configured for 50, so it's only outputting 50. And you can see the frame per second, so it's outputting at about 40 frames a second. But it does vary a little bit. Now, with F, you can actually display the frame rate in milliseconds as well if you want. There's an option to do that. The visualize button here lets you switch to different modes. So in this mode, you can actually see the brightness of the individual colors, so you can see uh, it's doing a color wash, so the red, red goes up and down, the blue goes up and down, the green goes up and down, and the white represents the average total brightness at any one point in time, and in a color wash that's a constant. If I was to change it to, you know, just a single color ramp, obviously the white line would also move in a ramp. 
this is your voltage drawer and your current drawer. Also very flat, but if I go to my controller here, go to test mode, spin down through the test modes to white ramp. So here's the white ramp test mode. So here you can see the current drawer goes up and down as it goes through the ramp. Right. And of course, you can log all of this data to that SD card if you want to analyze it after the fact. And going back to, and this is the oscilloscope view, right? So this allows you to see the data signal. As you can see, it's definitely not a perfect representation, but it does tell you that the data voltage peaks at 4.8 to 5 volts, which tells me I've got a really good data signal, which is not surprising given that it's only about two feet away from the controller. The pink line there represents what we believe is the minimum acceptable data voltage in order to get a reliable signal read. So if you come into this screen and you, you're not seeing uh, that, white, that, that white squiggly line above the pink line, then you may well have data signaling receiving issues and need to improve your grounding to your pixels. And then if I go back to the visualize, we're now on that white ramp. So it's obviously displaying white pixels going through a ramp. So that's the pixel input. Now, if I, sorry, if I go back to, go to alternate, let me go to RGB white black. Right, you will see that the, the number in square brackets drops to zero. And that's because the number in, the number of pixels on the left hand side represents the number of pixels for which data is being received. Now, some controllers output more data than you've actually configured on the port. So for instance, on the F16 V4, if you have 16 ports and one of them is 1000 pixels and all the rest are 100 pixels, actually every port will output the 1000 pixels. And so the number in square brackets represents the number of pixels for which there appears to be data. And so obviously when I output black, which it does, this drops to zero. So sometimes you're gonna to wanna to look at the first number, sometimes you're gonna to wanna to look at the second number, but it does represent actually what's on the wire. Um, so it's an accurate representation of what's actually happening. I can't know that you configured less pixels on a particular port if the controller is sending more data than that. So that's a pixel input. Let's go up to the DMX input. All right, to fix that. All right, so here it is showing, now we're doing RGB white black, so it's doing exactly the pattern that you would expect. Again, it's showing the number of channels uh, that are being output and the frame rate. It is expecting it to be uh, DMX, so it's using the DMX wire. I can change that wire to be Lightarama, and the type, the type is the protocol. Uh, if I hold, obviously, if I go to Lighter Armor, it's not receiving anything at all. If I click on the two buttons down, it will probe the protocols and comes back and tells me that it thinks it's DMX and starts showing me the data again. Uh, and you do the probe just by holding down the up and down keys and waiting for it to say probing at the top. It does the same thing with um, things. So this is the um, brightness. So obviously this is the average brightness of the entire string. So obviously when it goes white, it jumps all the way to the top. And when it goes black, it drops all the way to the bottom. And when it's doing RGB, it's doing every third channel. So it's a third of the way up. So that's what you'd expect. This is the same view, but this is, this is using bars. So not as obvious what's going on here. If I was to go and change the test mode uh, to one of the ramps, you'll see that the bars are going up, showing the brightness of the various channels. And using the up and down, you can spin through the 512 channels and see what's going on. So if you're looking for a particular channel, you can, you can scan through them that way. And then there's obviously this view here where you can see the individual channels and the values that are being received on each of those channels. So that's the DMX input. I disconnect that and go to a smart receiver output and plug that into the smart receiver input port and we'll go up to the smart receiver input. 
Okay. Now, this is currently doing Falcon V4, which is good because that's exactly what it is, but you can switch through the protocols and, and see. Now, often, if you've got the protocol setting, setting correctly, you will get some values displayed. Uh, that's quite normal. Uh, but if you get once you get the protocol right, of course, you'll get sensible data. This is producing quite nonsensical data. But if I probe it, it comes back and tells me that it's actually V4 data, and now it gives me an accurate representation of what's being received. I can, of course, drill in on specific receivers and see the data that's being sent to a particular receiver as well. Again, I can see, you know, the number of pixels configured and the number of pixels receiving data. It has the same brightness chart. Obviously, it's now showing it across four different ports because we're receiving four ports worth of data. So it, it tries to represent all four ports uh, on that receiver. Uh, it doesn't have the voltage and everything else because that doesn't make as much sense on a receiver because the voltage is not actually being transferred across this wire. So that's the, the various input modes. The output modes are a little bit harder to, to demonstrate, but uh, I will quickly flick through them. So the pixel output mode. So at first of all, it's, it's off counting the pixels, which it's now done and tells me that there's 100 pixels connected, uh, which is correct. And it shows me the voltage and the current. And of course, I can I can change. It's doing a red ramp. Now it's doing a green ramp on the pixels. And I can, of course, come down here and control uh, the number of outputs here. Uh, this is not the latest firmware. You, you can actually set the number of pixels that you output here as well. That will appear as another line below the brightness. So that's the, the pixel output screen. Uh, it, it basically acts like a test mode, except a test mode in your pocket with, with greater control. Uh, the smart receiver out is very similar. Again, here you can choose the brand of smart receiver that you want to output to. You can choose a, a specific receiver that you want to output to, so A, B, C, or D, or whatever, depending on the type. Or you can output to all at once, which will just send a set of pixels to all of them. The pattern, again, lets you set various uh, test patterns that you might want to output. And the brightness, of course, sets the brightness on those, those test patterns that you're outputting. And then finally, on the DMX output, uh, here you get to choose the protocol that you're outputting, so Renard or, or the Lightarama protocol, and you get to set the speed, and DMX, and of course you've got your various test patterns. Now, one of those test patterns is the channels test pattern, and here you can come down, whoops, here you can come down and you can set a particular channel number and a particular value that you want to output to that channel. So you know, if you're testing your moving headlight, that's how you can, you can control specific channels from within your hand. So you don't have to go back to X lights or some test program on your computer and run backwards and forwards to, to test things. So they're the output modes. The reference, I, I talked briefly about the reference. So this provides you with some, some very simple screenshots showing you which pins are which on the various uh, adapters. So this is your X-Connect. This is your Ray Wu adapter. Uh, this is your DMX XLR to Cat5. So if you're controlling an old school DMX device, which has the XLR connector, this is how you would connect your, connect your XLR connector up to the Cat5 cable. Um, so the colors look a lot better on the LCD screen than they do on the monitor here. But those are the, the, the pixel, oh, sorry, the, the wire colors that you would see on your Cat5 cable. This is your Renard adapter. So how you would build a crossover between your, your Falcon tester and your Renard controller. This is your Hinx picks and how you have to set up a, a, a crossover cable for the Hinx picks. And we're back to our X Connect. So just that in your pocket. Uh, there are a few settings that you can set. 
you can decide which mode you want it to start up in so by default of course it starts up at the main menu but if you're always using it for pixel input you can have it start up at the pixel input and save yourself having to press the buttons to get there you can also choose uh, here whether you display it as frame time as milliseconds or frames per second uh, this is also where you turn on logging now there is summary logging which will display you know the voltage the current the brightness and things like that or you can do detailed logging where it will actually log all of the channel data that's a lot more intense and it will obviously produce much larger files this is where you can set the effect. So the effect is effectively one of the test patterns is the effect test pattern. And so you can here you can set the effect and the palette that you use for that effect. And you can also set a brightness floor, which, which just controls how things display on the screen here. It stops some of the really dim colors on this LCD screen are quite dark and hard to see. So you can set a brightness floor to make sure it's easy to see things on the screen. So that's about it. If I go to the, sorry, if I go quickly back to the Pixel, oh, actually the Smart Receiver out, we did build into the test patterns here. Uh, we did build in some of the, 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 like the number. So this is on the Falcon controllers, you have the ability to number. So this will actually set the number of pixels on the smart receiver outputs to indicate which port you've plugged in. So if you're not sure that you plugged it into port one on the smart receiver or port two on the smart receiver, if you use this test mode, it will actually light it up and show you. It'll also show you what the receiver's configured at in terms of A, B, C, D, or E, or F. So that can be quite useful. That's also where you get to the effect test mode. So you can run whatever that effect is that you set. And you can light up groups of 100, 50s and 10s. So this displays pixels in those groups and sets them to different colors for easy counting. There's also a mode in the pixel output where you can, you can set the test mode uh, to be count, right? And so what it will do with this test mode is it will actually just continually count the number of pixels over and over and over again. So if you're plugging it into multiple props and you want to know the pixel count, rather than having to pop in and out, because normally it only counts the number of pixels when you enter pixel output mode, if you put it in the count three channel mode, it will just continue to count the pixels over and over and over again. So as you move the pixels in and out, it will go through. You had a menu item called flashlight. flashlight. What, what is, is that? that? <laughs> oh. So I, I just figured that sometimes it would be useful just to have the screen as white as you possibly could to light up a box in the dark. That's all it does. Availability, uh, the orders are open now on the Pixel Controller website. They will ship immediately after the Florida Mega Mini. Uh, we will have some available at the Florida Mega Mini. They will be limited numbers. I, I won't have one per person that's attending or anything like that sort of number. So uh, yeah, there, there will be a limited number of that available there. And obviously you don't need to pay shipping because you'll be able to take the device away with you. The price is $85 and then obviously shipping if, if you're getting it shipped. We will, uh, so some other obvious questions. Uh, can we support other protocols? I know this will come up at some point. We definitely have the ability to support other protocols. We haven't necessarily implemented other protocols yet. But all of the wiring is there, including support for four wire pixels. We could, in theory, enable the device to do clocked pixels and the like. We just we haven't done that in the first release just because we really think that the bulk of the market is in the WS2811 pixels. It does come by default with X Connects. Dave is looking to offer X Connect to Raywoo uh, adapters. But of course, you can make your own adapters, which is exactly what I've done here because I actually use Raywoo. But you can make your own adapter as well if you like or to any other uh, cable format if you want. Uh, if you really want to get adventurous, I guess you could open the box up and, and solder your own pigtails on. They are soldered to the board, but it, it's a relatively easy thing to replace if that's really what you want to do. In terms of the Hinx picks, like I said, if you're driving a Hinx Pix receiver, this will drive a Hinx Pix receiver and will dynamically reconfigure the Hinx Pix receiver to receive the data. 
the way the Hinx Picks works, it actually configures the receivers at boot time, and so that does make it a little bit hard to receive data from the controller. It will do it, but yeah, it, it, it uh, has to make a bunch of assumptions, or you need to power cycle the controller when you want to receive it. And obviously, once you finish texting, testing your receivers with the F-Test, you will need to plug them back into Hinx Picks and reboot your Hinx Picks in order to configure those receivers back for whatever your show configuration is. The Lightarama stuff, like I said, it does pretty good with the, uh, the AC type and DC type control boards for the Pixel controllers. I'm a little less sure how well it's going to work with those. I think there's probably a little bit of work we need to do to expand the Lightarama protocol support but otherwise it's there. The screen itself is actually a, a bigger than you think. I mean, it's not huge, admittedly, but uh, just going through the questions here, it, it is, it's much bigger than you see on a controller, those little OLED screens on a controller. It's somewhere between three times and maybe four times bigger than those little OLED screens, so, so it is better. We haven't got plans to add support for a bigger screen beyond that. The screen's not waterproof. You do not want to submerge this, submerge this device. It will be the last time you use it. Is there a way to basically use this as a self-tester without a controller to power the lights? Like you have another auxiliary 12 volt power supply? You can, you but can. You, will, you, just, you just need to put that power in through the pixel input connector. But yes, you can. But yeah, you would need to plug in a X-Connect pixel input. Doesn't need the data wire connected, but needs the power connected because it's drawing the power through the device to the lights. Okay, so basically on the input side, just don't hook up a data side. Okay, That's just right. the power. If you're powering it through a 12-volt power supply with no data line. Right. And you're you're basically testing individual strings. Does yes. that will that power up all the uh, the the screen and all the features that right. to yes, it make will. it run? It'll draw, the, it'll draw the power from the pixel line to power the device. Yes. Okay. So you don't need the USB external yeah. the yeah. power so toys. Right now, so right now it's it's running it's it's running pixel count mode at the moment. The device is powered up. There's no USB connected. It's drawing the power from the controller. Can it generate test patterns without being hooked to a controller? Yes, you can run the test patterns without hooking it to a controller, but you do need to provide power input. And, but if your pixels are 12 volts and you're only putting in, uh, uh, hooking it to a 5 volt supply, where do, would you also well, have to? No, you, you have to provide the pixel power via the pixel input if you want to run pixels on directly from it. If you want to run smart receivers or DMX, you don't need to provide pixel power. You can just run that directly off the USB, but it won't take the USB battery, scale it up to 12 volts and run your pixels. It won't even run your five volt pixels. Okay, that's what I was curious about. Yeah, no, you must, you. Pro you must provide pixel power on the input if you want to run pixels. It only supports three types of controllers, Falcon, Higgs, Pix, LOR. No, no, it'll work with pretty much any controller that outputs 2811. So, you know, your Alpha Pixes, your J1 Sisses, your, it does, it, you know, your Ab Abitex, et cetera, it'll work fine with those. It'll receive the Abitech long range stuff. That's just a dumb receiver. So it'll, it'll receive that as well. You know, when we talk about the things that we receive, we talk about it in terms of the, the unique protocols. And so the Falcon V4, the Falcon V3, the DUMB protocol, the Hinx picks, et cetera, they're, they're quite distinct protocols and, and we support them. Many of the others just reuse the existing protocols. So, you know, when you plug it into an Abitech uh, on a smart receiver, it, it will be a DUMB protocol. And so you'll, you'll have to set it to DUMB mode to see that data. If you plug it into an experience lights, you'll have to set it to Falcon V4, or if you press auto detect, it will detect as a Falcon V4 because their protocol is actually reusing the Falcon V4's protocol. So a Falcon V2 or a SAN devices or something like that will, will work? Uh, absolutely. But they'll work in dumb, dumb, dumb mode. Uh, SAN devices obviously don't do remotes, they just do pixel output. So again, if you're outputting WS2811, it will work fine with that.
But if you're running TLS 3001, for instance, right now it won't work. 